welcome to episode 92 of the Colby Cast. If you're a hesitant homeschooler, unconvinced parent considering homeschooling, or anywhere in between, we think you'll find a lot to like in this episode. Kathy and Nikolai Lund are the parents of three Colby students, past and present. With candor, humor, and encouragement, the Lunds share their homeschooling story, from its rough start rife with doubt, to the bounty of riches in virtue, relationship, and accomplishment form that they've experienced, with an emphasis on the role Colby has played in preparing their daughters to pursue holiness as they go out into the world. We hope you enjoy. Hi there, I'm Bonnie, liturgical musician, popcorn and podcast fanatic, and Colby homeschooling mom to four lads and lasses of middle and high school age. And this is Stephen, homeschooling father of five and director of development for Colby Academy. For those of us whose children haven't yet graduated, Hearing from parents a little further down the path is greatly reassuring, especially parents with success stories like the one we'll hear today. Kathy and Nikolai Lund have three daughters, two of whom are Colby alumni. We had the pleasure of meeting daughter Aviva in episode 26, Truth is a Person, and daughter Martina in episode 76, Study Buddies. Today we get to meet their parents and hear their perspective on how Colby has shaped the lives of their lovely and accomplished daughters. Kathy and Nikolai, welcome to the Colby cast. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's our pleasure. Thank you so much for coming to talk to us. It's been a while since we visited with parents of, of Colby families. That we These are some special episodes where we really glean a lot of how other folks make this work. So we appreciate you coming to share your story with us. Would you tell us about yourselves and how you came to Colby and how you use Colby? Um, well, Colby is, uh, you see, I'm, I, I can't thank Colby enough for what they have done for our family. It is, um, as I, I will go in through, through our conversation, I will be telling stories about our kids. Um, I just got a phone call from one of my kids that is in uh, Notre Dame, Aviva, which you, you have interviewed her before. Mm-hmm. And suddenly she's talking to me how she deals with the pressure of the university, how she deals with the, with the contradictions of life or the society. She was in Israel as well, and she dealt with so many issues that most young people deal that are not easy. Mm-hmm. And then she comes out with answers. And I said, Aviva, where did you hear that? That was a good one. <laughs> Mr. Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I have so much gratitude to Mr. Schultz. If I, I'm going to meet him one day and I'm going to, I have to call him and say, Mr. Schultz. You have no idea. I think when he dies one day, he'll be in front of God and he'll have thousands of people behind him. Yep. And he has no idea how much goodness he had brought into my family and my kids. And I want him to know that. And Kobe, I mean, I can tell a lot of stories, most of the teachers. I'm amazed how Kobe picks uh, teachers. Nikolai and I wanted to prepare and protect our kids, uh, pr- protect them and prepare them for life. Protect them from when they're little, they're, they're fragile and you want them strong and with good formation and information. And when um, it's been our interest and we're, our, our, to, we want to expose them to the best we can of positive, positive uh, formation. And uh, I have been amazed of the teachers that Kobe has, the level of. Um, First, the clarity is, is it so beautiful when you, when you are Catholic or you have a strong faith. See, because not everybody is Catholic, Colby, but let's see, when you have a desire for goodness and for truth, that you turn around and then you have a teacher who has the same, exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And we never met before. Yeah. And uh, it's the same in the human nature and the way that in, in all the... And I love those moms that are sitting sometimes teaching my kids with the babies or the dog and my kids can see what they couldn't see in a class these beautiful women heroic women or men who are passionate about the truth and they're great guys yes and uh, great fathers great uh, teachers it's like they see life more than i would have ever thought i would have never thought that a computer could do that right you know, if, if, if I'm trying to answer the question in terms of um, homeschooling, you know, because we, have, we all have a choice 
public school, private school, or homeschool. And uh, I think our observation was we were not happy what we actually had in a private Catholic school. So uh, we felt that from academia point of view, it was not really fulfilling what we were hoping for. And the secondary thing was that uh, we wanted to be part of a Catholic community. And even though this was a school of a church, Catholic church, uh, a lot of people use this as a cheap way to get a private school. And uh, so there was a lot of, so we say, teachers and students that had a different interest than we had. So uh, my wife, uh, brother, and his wife uh, have taught their kids, seven kids through homeschooling. And uh, we came to visit. And uh, my wife uh, was convinced after this visit, she can explain this in more detail because she was the one that was there. So we went there, she was inspired. And then the two of us went to an event in New Jersey to meet about homeschooling. And uh, that is where my wife for the first time heard about. So maybe you want to share the journey about how you wanted um, to be homeschooled. We have never homeschooled because <laughs> it was out of the question. Not because I thought they, they were doing my sister and I was doing a great job, but she had a she has a master degree in education and she's American. I have a thick accent, as you can see. He's from Denmark. And I said, I cannot teach English. And I wanted my kids to be fluent in English. And I want them to be Americans and, you know, to give them all the opportunities that this beautiful country can give them and succeed um, to the glory of God. So there's a, let me give you a little background, which I think it will be helpful sure. because um, the reason why I think I can talk is because Nikolai was not Catholic and I was Catholic, but with some formation limited formation with a high, but a strong desire for God and for goodness. And when we got married and we started a family and we wanted a family to be, to be a good family. We never want to have divorce. Nicola comes from a society where divorce is, is marriage doesn't exist. And um, he wanted a family. And he thought he could get to know God one day. I'm saying this because I can tell you that my kids know the contrast. They know the difference between having God and not having God. Okay. And so then um, when we started our family, we were always open to see what is the best thing for the kids and what to give them. So, yes, education was not, um, not going to happen. I wasn't going to home school because I could never, I thought I could never give them the education and I was looking for good education. I come also from a family that is highly academic. Okay. Ridiculously academic. Okay. Everything is about Ivy Lee's or the, the, they want to be the best and wherever they go. Okay. And, um, I, I couldn't give them that. It was out of the question. I thought at that point, if I would have homeschooled and mm -hmm. even if that was what we wanted to give them, I wasn't sure, you know, you're not sure when you start a family. Right. But um, when uh, we saw the possibility of homeschooling, we, uh, we like traveling because we are from different countries. Sure, yeah. And we love the, what traveling does to a family. Uh, traveling keeps you together. So you have to learn to, to live together wherever you go. Right. And it makes the world bigger. And I want my kids to have a big world that they can recognize different cultures with no, without, you know, see the world that is big enough for, for them. It never stops. So uh, that is, uh, uh, they love the world. I want them to love the world. And it's hard, it was hard for us to travel uh, when they were in the parish school. Mm -hmm. So with the, when the, the temptation came to do homeschooling, I said, hmm, we could maybe travel. And then my sister and I said, take them out of the school for a year. And then uh, you can put them back and, and say, yeah, I can do that. I do for one year and I, I we travel and we'll see. And then I have them back. And I also was very active in the parochial school, extremely active mm -hmm. with the parents. So it just didn't seem like the right thing to do to take them out. But I said, okay, we're going to do the traveling. He has uh, changed his jobs. So it was an opportunity. So we took them out. But God has a good sense of humor. <laughs> and then we, um, we start our adventure. Mm -hmm. And then we went to this, uh, Nicolai said it was a homeschooling workshop. And then uh, one of the women that were there, I said, I, I want, 
I want a program that I want a curriculum that is high in science. Which one do you recommend? Colby. Stick with Colby, she said. So I went and I started buying the curriculums from Colby. Uh, and we started our adventure of homeschooling. And we loved it. I can't tell you. And the thing that I learned through this is that uh, homeschooling is not, um, gen cannot be generalized. It's very personal. Mm -hmm. It has to do with your relationship with your husband and with the kids. And every kid is unique. That's the beauty. It's a family. Right. So you're putting all your values. And if you don't grow, the kids don't grow. So having them at home doesn't give you a choice. So many people come to me. Because they gave me a hard time when I was homeschooling. They said they thought we were going to destroy our kids. Mm -hmm. And then now that they see them and they are so happy, because the kids are happy and everybody wants to be happy. They're happy human beings. They want to know what I did. And they lost their kids, some of them. So they come and they ask me, what did you do? And I, I want to homeschool my kids. And my answer is, it's not just homeschooling. Where do I get the tutor? And where did it? It's actually getting very involved with them and discover who they are. And you have to grow. You have no choice. That's the beauty. If you don't grow, if you don't look for the truth, you have nothing to give them. So that had forced both of us to be better husband and wife between the two of us, mm -hmm. to learn, go crazy to try to keep that family, whatever it takes together. And to how can you have them at home and don't give them the best? Right, right. It's a that that's very much that has come up and some other conversations we've had on the Colby cast, how we recognize when we have our kids with us here at home, we recognize so much about ourselves and and the challenge that that we need to rise to when we are when we have them here with us, interacting with them day in, day out. It's very much um, incumbent upon us to to rise to it ourselves. Yeah, that's so true. And we were doing more repairing, a lot of repairing when the kids were coming from school. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Nicolai. So, so what I was going to say is that, uh, to be honest, uh, I was not too excited, uh, thrilled about this idea hmm. uh, of homeschooling. I thought my kids would get lost. I grew up in a society, you get sent to prison if you do a homeschooling, hmm. and they'll come and pick up the kids and basically put you away. So uh, that was not a system that uh, I was even familiar with. And uh, maybe this is not the right word for it, but uh, I was concerned that my kids would turn into some hillbillies. <laughs> and uh, yep. and uh, so, so the point being somewhat uneducated, live in the forest or something like this mm -hmm. and drink water from, from the sky. And uh, uh, <laughs> but, but, I, but I realized there's many different types of homeschoolers. Uh, there's homeschooler that, like, uh, not necessarily a scholar, academic minded, but uh, like the fact that they can give their kids the education they would like to be, believe in. There's athletes that um, and travel a lot, actress, uh, performers that uh, homeschooling is really the only way the kids can get an education for them to spend time with the kids at the same time. Um, and uh, I think part of the problem is, uh, or in our case, I'm not an educator. I'm not very, you know, I'm a Danish guy. I'm a, a Wall Street guy, guy mm -hmm. finance, and uh, not really that involved with the with the whole job around homeschooling. I was the principal, but uh, mm -hmm. I would say it's fair to say that my wife uh, did most of the education. And I remember <laughs> sitting. And in many ways, uh, undermining my wife in the first uh, three months of the homeschooling when there was a trial period, sitting at Ikea in the parking lot and asking my kids, oh, what have you learned in school today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we went to the supermarket. Okay, and we learned what thing cost. So my wife used somewhat of a practical approach to homeschooling in the early phase. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I probably was not the best help because I think I was confusing to the kids that Mom and Daddy don't seem to be in the same wavelength in regards to this. So I had my doubts. And I think it's probably more of a maybe meant that's not home and, and really seeing what goes on will have some reservation around this. But uh, I was wrong. My wife knew what she was doing and she did a really good job at it. And I think a lot of times people think you need to be a teacher to be a good homeschooling family. And uh, none of us are teachers. 
and uh, I discovered that that's not a requirement uh, for you to uh, be a successful homeschooling family. So from that point of view, I would say that uh, I undermined my wife. I had doubts. And uh, what I sit back with here today is to realize uh, that our life would not be the same without homeschooling. I don't think our kids would be as well prepared because we did homeschooling all the way through high school. And, uh, and I don't think that the kids would be as prepared when it comes to uh, apply for college and actually succeed in college. And I think homeschooling or academia wise, uh, Kobe is probably the best preparation that you can get to going to college. And we recognize there are certain colleges that look down upon homeschoolers, uh, but I think this is changing because what we experienced with the COVID here is that um, the traditional institution dealt very poorly with educating their kids because they were accustomed to work in a classroom while um, homeschooling families don't really work in a traditional class environment. And it's no fault of the teachers because you are taught in a particular way of doing things, nor is it a fault of the kids. Right. But when you enter a homeschooling program like the uh, COPE, uh, you basically, uh, you understand the mythology of how things work. And uh, from that thing, uh, I would say, in many ways, it's the way things are in college, you know, learning to manage your own time. And uh, I must though say that it's a very rigorous program, you know, it's very demanding. And uh, the kids wake up six o'clock in the morning and study throughout the day. But it's not like we only study, we have extra calligram, piano instructors, guitar instruction, swim practice. And, and then, you know, we have the community of homeschoolers I can talk to you about a little later. I, I really appreciate your perspective very much, Nikolai, and I think it speaks right to an experience that I know that we and many other families who have made a transition from parochial or a public school to homeschool, and we have walked a similar road to make just making that adjustment, giving ourselves a little bit of time or a lot of time to get used to how it works at home as opposed to what we were accustomed to or what we were expecting it to look like before we started homeschooling. And when I want to re-emphasize, I think we men uh, need to trust our wives when they take on a responsibility like this. This is a big doing, and uh, I hope other father men uh, will uh, support their wife in this uh, attempt, uh, because it does make things more difficult if you're not supporting from the very beginning. And uh, if you can I have the capability to help out, you certainly should as a father in helping the kids along with this uh, onboarding process to this new format. And I wanted, I wanted to say something I was thinking. Um, we are in the state of New York, as I told you, and the area where we live is extremely um, competitive. Okay. At least where we live, very competitive. People are coming for the best industries. They want to get the best. And whatever they do, they want to be the best in any industry. <laughs> so there's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I... When I talk to people and people come and they, I, I had a sample, I have an example. There's a, a woman, somebody recommended this woman to talk to me because I homeschool my kids. And she wanted, she had her daughter in, uh, in one of the best schools in the area and mm -hmm. here in one of the towns that send the kids to the best schools, it has a great reputation. People moved in that area for the school. And she was very stressed and she said, <laughs> that her daughter was doing really well, but she was losing her daughter. She was 14. It's a, it's a, it's a very sensitive age. It's an age that mm -hmm. you, if you can be next to her, I mean, you should be with them earlier then it's easier to go through that age. But if you haven't, you, you start feeling, and I had a lot of friends who are feeling that they're losing their kids. Mm -hmm. So she was very anxious and she said, I went home to school. And so obviously she asked me, uh, my kid, ha it's in a great academic, uh, the academy is amazing. The classes are hard. She said, but I, how do I get her in uh, homeschooling to that level? <laughs> so I recommend Kobe, obviously. And I said, you're going to love it. Mm. So she, <laughs> she's, I'm laughing because she started uh, doing COVID. And she's greatly, I mean, she's a very educated woman. And then she came back and she, um, she said to me, my daughter's not, uh, it's having a hard time. Um, she's not doing that well. And I, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult program. 
And I said, you told me that your school was very highly academic, rigorous. It is, actually. It's one and then she was surprised. She's, oh, yeah, yeah, my, she would do really good. Then I started realizing the problem is that and through Colby, she, she, by the way, she continued with Colby and she did great. She picked it up. Good. But the, the, the issue is that they, they, are, they used to be spoon fed the education. COVID, that's not, that's not the case. It's, right. The kids get the information and they have to work themselves. Right. It's not like watching television. You have to learn. You want to learn, learn. <laughs> no easy going. So it is great because the rigorosity is not so much the amount of work and as owning the desire to learn, owning every class, owning the, the content. So it is fantastic. When they talk about what they're doing in the schools, teaching online, I said, it has nothing to do with what we do, nothing to do. This is a different concept of education. I don't know if you, you agree with me or you relate to that mm -hmm. with your own experience, but uh, <laughs> yes, very much. I love COVID. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I, do, I can very much relate. Yes, it is. And that takes some time to get used to as well. Like, oh, hold on. I have to show up here too and do this. Yes. And I have a, an older daughter that went to Berkeley, mm -hmm. and I, I, I asked both of them yesterday, I, individually, I said, so what, I repeat it, I think they have said, but what, what is that Colby has given you? And they both said, for us, it was easy to get into these schools, highly academic. It was not, <laughs> they were not harder than Colby. <laughs> they were not. Mm -hmm. So we were completely ready. Listen to my accent. Listen to his accent. <laughs> And Nina got a five points. She got a five in her AP English. Wow. Martina got a four. They get it. They, they can read books mm -hmm. with no problem. A lot of reading. Not only that, not only they can read, they have read the best books you want to read. Beautiful books, beauty, humanity. They understand humanity. My kids understand humanity deeply to the young age, the way every kid should understand. And I'm not talking about religion or it's human nature. It's like understanding how human behavior works. We have thousands of years of history. We should be able to, why don't they tell them? We have enough experience. I mean, we don't go back to the stone. We should not go back. To, we know in human beings where we have been and where we're going to be. Yeah. And my kids can, it's like they, they don't fall easily. The, the, the world doesn't sell them easily because, hey, <laughs> Just think about yesterday. Yeah. Why are we denying thousands of years of experience? Mm -hmm. So it is, I love their minds. I, I love them. I, I have, I, I have Martinez right now in her uh, literature and history and morality class, and she's reading encyclicals. And I love it. We sit and we can discuss and we can talk because there's so much going on in the world. The kid knows. The kid is thinking. Mm -hmm. The kid will always want to know. She will never stop wanting to know, and she will know where to go to find out the truth. She knows the sources. So it is, it's, it's, an, it's an open door education. It's an education that never ends until, you know, you, you'll, never, you'll never end the knowing. It. You'll die wanting to know more. And it, what, what, I, what I would inject here as well is that uh, it, Kobe is not a memorization program where you learn to remember things and then you forget. There are programs there for that particular purpose. Uh, Kobe is, is a program that challenges you as a student. And uh, what I would say is that, uh, you know, I'm not a great writer. I'm a little dyslexic. I couldn't write in Danish. I can write in English. Now we've got all these spell checks. But uh, to see how my girls, all three of them, uh, mastering the ability to put an essay together, two or three essays in one day, a complex, challenging, yeah. is, is the, the power of capability to articulate the issue ver uh, verbally as well in writing is priceless. You can do both of them. You have the world into your hand. So, uh, so I'm just saying when, when it comes to uh, uh, the size of the book they're reading, and I said, it's like, oh my God, you're going to read that book and then write an essay about it. You know, it's the size of a brick, you know. <laughs> uh, so I'm just saying, people that are looking for uh, academia 
challenged opportunities. Kobe is the right one. If you want an easy ride, I, I would not recommend Kobe. Uh, and if you want to prepare, prepare your kids for college, this is the best way to do it. And then, you know, now that I've been working from home, I and Martina is the last one we have, and I listen to her how she's interacting with the teachers and her classmates through uh, the classes. The teachers are fun. They make it fun learning. Martina's laughing uh, uh, throughout uh, the day, you know, and uh, the teachers, you know, uh, dress up. Uh, the teachers, you know, say jokes, you know, and challenge the kids. It's a very healthy, friendly environment of education. Uh, it's not hostile. It's not putting down. It is basically encouraged learning. And uh, so I'm just saying, I wish I'd had a chance to learn like this. Maybe I could yes. be a better speller. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I learned too um, through the years, as I said, when I was just starting to do homeschooling, Nicole, I said I knew what I was doing. I really didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I, was, I felt that it was right. And I always felt that if it didn't work, the kids will, kids are sponges. They'll pick it up in the school again if they have to go back. So I was always open to the best education I could, I could find at that moment, whatever the moment. And also, I'm still open, and I think about every child as unique. I'm sure you do too. Mm -hmm. they, they're unique, and that is the beautiful challenge. It forces you to see every kid as the way they are, what their strengths, what their weakness, what their virtues. So you get to know them, and you, or you, well, you, you get to know them more, or you never stop getting to know them because they, they, they go through all the stages and they change. But it's beautiful because uh, it's, a, it's a good challenge. It's a challenge of love. So um, as the kids were going through the process, I've been, it has been fantastic because I could choose a math program that is convenient. And that, Kobe helped me a lot also to check what is that in the, the way that Cognitive development will pick up. I had a kid, for example, with problems with seizures. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to do, I had to do more concrete work. So even though I'm not a teacher, that's not my education as a teacher. We, with the kids and I, we figure out how to get that education according to their um, interest, their way of learning and the, the passions. And, and I told them how to deal with, for example, math, which is usually, not with Aviva, but my other kids, math is a challenging uh, subject. So I, I was teaching them more than learning math, learning how to deal with things that are hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's do math. Much, let's, yeah. let's learn to think mathematically. So uh, uh, Kobe guided, guided us and we just look at the tools. Our house was every single tool we can think until the, until they, they start getting the foundation. But the foundation wasn't the, so much the information as the way of learning, the way of learning. They were discovering what are the strengths and weakness. If, they, if one had a great memorization, she needed more of um, less memorization, but more thinking and mission intellectually because they were handicap, handicapping with the, with the memorization. Yeah. So teach them to think. So I didn't have to do so much academia as learning together to, to organize time and discovering who they are. Mm -hmm. And with the, uh, and that was fantastic. It went really fast. I felt that uh, it, I don't know if it happens to you, but it goes so fast mm -hmm. that you wish you would have more opportunities. It was a great experience. You, you had been looking at other programs yeah. in terms of how they prepare the parent or the teacher for uh, running the program, uh, the, the journals, the, the background versus the way COVID does it. Oh, had they, with the curriculums? Yeah. They work? I always like the COVID curriculums. I love the, when I tried to, I think I wanted to take one class because I wasn't eclectic at the beginning. And then I tried other programs, Catholic, good Catholic schools. Mm -hmm. No, I, I liked them. I liked the, the, that I had hands on for myself. It was, I realized that it's human nature when somebody else takes care of you, you let go. I don't know if you had that feeling. Yes. If, uh, if I notice that I have a, when the cleaning lady comes to my house and she cleans, I suddenly not to worry about cleaning. Okay. When she's gone for a while, ah, oh, my house is, <laughs> I take over my house, it becomes my house again. Yes. So whenever the kids, we're giving the kids uh, um, too much to school or to an institution, suddenly we let go here. 
And mm -hmm. I, I love that Kobe also did put a responsibility on my, I, I was in charge and I like that. Some people want somebody else to take care of you. I think it's, it's good. Kathy, take care of things. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, I, I will also want to cover before the, the interview is over about um, socialization, because I know that is what people panic. And I would love to cover that if it's possible, a little bit about it, because absolutely. Yeah, I've been talking about academia, 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 but there's that would be wonderful. That is another one of the top concerns we hear from people. Uh, we've had opportunities to ask people what they're most concerned about starting homeschooling. And that is always right up there, the socialization piece or that they are they themselves may not be as concerned about it, but people close to them worry about it for them. And so I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Yes. So let me start with the socialization. Uh, you know, this is a homeschooling phenomena that uh, we challenge with. But uh, I remember in the early stage, we saw a lot of homeschooling uh, YouTube videos made by homeschooling kids. Very, very funny. And uh, they made fun of themselves, what people perceived about homeschooling kids. And obviously, uh, it was a lot of stereotyping. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, what I would say is, you know, every community are, is different. Um, we were fortunate to have two homeschooling communities around here. One was in Connecticut and one was in New York. One is very involved with sports and the other one is very involved with theater. So, uh, so there was plenty of different opportunities for the kids to participate in these kind of things. When you go and visit, you know, a traditional family, maybe I'm stereotyping, but uh, why not? Uh, who is receiving you in the door? He's usually the dog, you know, and then the parents come and you never meet the kids. They were locked to come to have a meal with you. They don't say hi. They don't know how to put out their hands, shake your hand and say hi, introduce themselves and ask a polite question. As a homeschooling uh, family, we really participate in, in a, a, a slice of society. You know, there's something wrong with the way we talk today where everybody uh, in fourth grade the same age, everybody in fifth grade the same age, uh, tenth grade everybody the same age. That's not the real society. This is a school system that's been made practical. If you look at uh, the education system back in the good old days, you have one classroom with like eight kids and maybe two of them were in the same grade. And you had a teacher that had to teach them all at the same time. and. Uh, so this is, we had three daughters and they're all homeschooled and they were uh, taught in the same program, but uh, uh, at the same time, but with different teachers. So that's what I personally like about homeschooling is that when we go to a lot of these homeschooling events, uh, the kids are very open and they're accustomed to socialize, interact with much older kids than, than themselves. And little kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, little kids. All ages. Little, yeah. All ages. So, right. so yes. uh, yeah, mm -hmm. all ages are probably a better way to put it. So I think that's the beautiful about homeschooling. You don't just hang around with a like-minded kid from 8 o'clock in the morning to 2 o'clock or you extra activity to 4 o'clock, but you have actually a chance to hang out with kids of many different ages. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, I would say you come to dinner at our place and uh, you will see our kids never leave. They will be sitting throughout the dinner, three, four, five hours, uh, participating in dialogue with the uh, adults mm -hmm. uh, because they uh, like to learn and they're good at asking questions. And this is another thing that is interesting. Uh, right now that I'm, I, Martina is 16 and um, she has friends from school and or from the homeschool and we have we have a large community of homeschoolers. So all parents who are homeschooling, they try to find activities that uh, the kids can do. So we do science fairs, we do a volleyball team, basketball. So it's up to the parents to put together great, great uh, social activities. If anything, we have over socialization. We have too many, <laughs> too many activities. But one thing I noticed uh, with a 16 year old and her friends that are and my kids are free. They're really free. Mm -hmm. They can be who they want to be. But for them, the concept of the kids who are uh, her friends that are not that in that age that they're so concerned about all what others think and that's what rules. They're not free. 
So whenever anybody makes a joke, they feel, oh, can you imagine she made that joke? And, and they made a comment about the homeschooling that they could make jokes and do whatever, be themselves. Like that was a bad thing. It's a bad thing to be free. So my, Martina turned around and said, what's wrong about that? Hmm. What's wrong about being who I want to be and be happy? And that is socially wrong. And, and this kid later on realized and she said, that's true. What, what's wrong about that? Hmm. Not, so the, they're happy kids. They're free. They have a lot of respect to authority, respect to, I mean, that comes from the family, but in general, because they're surrounded with great examples of families, of adults and other moms, in, my, in our situation at least. They're exposed to great dads, great moms, wonderful kids, different ages. So the world has got bigger than what it was from school in our situation. I mean, you have to make that world, I think it's, but at least you have more opportunities than the school. Our parties are great parties. Mm -hmm. uh, there's dancing, beautiful dancing. We don't have to, the parents can be part of the party mm -hmm. and we can dance with our kids and they don't feel uncomfortable. They're not, uh, there's this basic discomfort that is normal of the age, but there's not this complete, that they cannot be themselves. So I, I find that my kids socially, <laughs> they had the best uh, adolescence. Am I saying it right, adolescence? Your, your girls with whom I've enjoyed speaking and so many of the other homeschool alumni who have come on the Colby cast and the ones I work with here at Colby and in other places, I notice consistently how, how well they know themselves, how self-assured they are, how comfortable they are in their own, in their own selves and, and being themselves among, um, in, in whatever situation they find themselves. So I, that's something I admire very much. It's true. I really love the, and I agree completely with kind of how unusual what we're told that the school situations out there where you're all of one age, all in a room together, and that's the normal way of socializing is just, it's so odd that that, that we've, I mean, we, we, many people accept it right now, but you just look at the situation, the damage it's just setting your child up for because they're going outside the home to a teacher who has to spread their attention out amongst however many, 12, 15, 20 kids, all of the same age. And there's that competition for, will I be loved by my teacher? You know, because that they become the parent figure for a, a large part of the day. And in a loving home, there's an abundance of love. There's an abundance of attention. But in that classroom, the teacher can't give that love to every student and they're all it's it would be like having you know it's already hard enough when, when with families that i talk to that have twins or triplets or anything like that there's more of a, a struggle a fight because am i better than my twin or what you know so that's that creates extra but imagine if you had 14 other people that were your same age and you're all vying for the attention of one parent um it's just really hard i think and so I, I don't know how that has become the, the standard and that we have to address why this natural situation of homeschooling is is good for socialization, but it, that's the way it is. But we, we've experienced in our family, my five kids, all of the, what you're saying, all of those, the beauty and love, the, the great relationships and the having well-formed, not damaged children from being in, in those other. I was a public school child myself, so I... I went through firsthand and got to experience those things, and I didn't want that for my children. But, uh... well, Stephen, uh, what I wanted to say is that um, the reason for why we have the Sioux school system today is because of the Industrial Revolution. But we live in a service society today, so there's no need uh, for the kids to be taught the way they used to be taught. And we now live in a world where two years of COVID have basically make a uh, progression we were probably going in direction anyway that now materialized over a two-year period instead of maybe 20 years and uh, it just gave all of us opportunity to make new choices that we may not have had available for us before and uh, they always advertise you know do you know where your child is and uh, who is the who is the, the child's friends and uh, by doing homeschooling, you know 
where your kid is and uh, <laughs> you know uh, who their friends are because a lot of time you actually drive the kids over there and uh, and i think that this socialization between the kids and the parents you know is a great thing but the one thing kathy alluded to earlier i think is uh, the way we raised our kids is when they were young we protect them and uh, it's difficult in today's world to protect your kids if you don't know where they are and who they are with the second thing is we prepare them and guide them through their teenage age. And uh, as they're now in the later stage of teenage before college, we empower them. But uh, we discover that uh, uh, our kids were very independent and uh, very reliable in early on in life. And it's something you earn the trust from your parents. So uh, this protect, guide, prepare and um, empower our kids actually mature that sort of maturity and own that right at a very, very young age. So when you enter high school as a much more mature person, then uh, expecting you to be babysit by the teachers, be scold and you want to be funny and all these kind of things, uh, you basically uh, are doing the children, I'm trying to think about, and you're not doing them a favor. Uh, we call it a bear favor in Danish, you know, Bjorn the Chainster. So you basically setting the kids up for struggles that did not necessarily need to be faced with. Mm -hmm. And uh, where are you to comfort the kids? So uh, if it's about giving your kids security, comfort, and uh, better education, I think uh, Kobe is the answer. I absolutely agree. And I would love for you to tell us more about this idea. We This comes up sometimes in our conversations, the idea of this protection. Almost we get this criticism sometimes of having our kids in a bubble. But then you speak so beautifully to the way Colby has prepared your girls to face challenges to and stand for and keep going in their faith now that they are moving on from um, their their Colby years and into young adulthood. Could you talk to me about how that how that looks as you have nurtured them through their formative years and going on into their the beginning of their young adult lives, how they have taken that with them? I think uh, you can talk about Anina going to Berkeley. Any, uh, my oldest went to uh, Berkeley and many of our friends were saying, you're going to lose her. And I was nervous about it, but um, gosh, no, it went, uh, I can't thank. I can't thank God more. The three of them are strong in their faith. And um, of course, it's grace, but I, I will say that uh, I don't think it would have happened. It wouldn't be because of homeschooling. Um, because opposite of what people think, as you said, I think that when it's just like a normal biology, I think if you look at um, plants. When they're tiny, you cannot take a tiny plant. You have to protect it, put a good uh, ground and make sure that it lives thick and make sure that it, the plant is protected because it couldn't take that much. You don't, when you're growing vegetables, you don't put them outside and you have to wait until, you have to make sure they don't make it that easily. I think when they're young, you wanna give them a lot of stability and a lot of goodness and, and make them understand that, that there's right and wrong. There's evil and goodness, but fill them with beauty and goodness. So they believe in life. So they're strong on that, they're strong on goodness because they're little plants, they're tiny. So there's no need to throw them into this difficult, uh, the difficulty of life because they will make it, they will have so many. I have scars, horrible scars on my childhood in the school, not in, a, <laughs> not in my home. So, and they, they're still, I wake up with nightmares. Um, because I was too young for, for what I had to see and what I have to hear. So it's not a bubble, it's, it's a time of strengthening, making them stronger, like we do with a tree, a tree that is, is gone through a lot when it's little, it's gonna be twisted and with a lot of problems, but a tree that was well taken care is gonna grow strong. The trunk is gonna be strong and it's gonna be able to handle anything. So yes, but as Nikolai said, we were not, we were preparing them, mm -hmm. so we were aware. Mm -hmm. And they heard us very clearly what life was going to be. And as you build their virtues and as you build the, the, the understanding, actually in all the stories, you always see evil present. So they understand that evil is present. And they do see evil in themselves sometimes. 
the bad tendencies, the relationship with the siblings when they, and it's the beauty of our, the beauty of our faith when we're dealing with our our own failures in the family, within the family. I don't know, I'm sure guys, this is the beautiful thing about family. In our relationships are not easy. Do you know what it's to be married to a Dane and married to an Equatorian and then dealing with, a, my kids are four years apart mm -hmm. and different cultures, different countries. So. It's not a problem. It has been a source of holiness or growth. I mean, I said, it makes you, the heart expands. So my kids expand. The more they, they had to deal with their own relationships and the family relationship, which is intimate. So yes. it requires a lot of forgiveness, a lot of tolerance, a lot of growth. The heart gets bigger. It's like moms of 10 kids, so the heart is bigger. <laughs> so I think the family is uh, a beautiful challenge of love and it has, uh, it has a strength in them. So when they, when I saw them going to Berkeley, when I saw Aviva, Anina going to Berkeley, which wasn't easy. I saw her very, first she had a great, solid, clear idea of um, great formation, great formation. It had the sacraments, it had the, the tools that, of, our, of their faith, but she, and the, uh, very supportive. And also Mr. Bajorski had guided us when we were, she's an athlete, so we were going to, she, we had to do a lot of things. Um, we had to be exposed to a lot of things that are not necessarily easy when you're practicing Catholic. So I asked my, Mr. Bajorski, how do I do in Berkeley? And he guided me a little bit with, he's in California, I'm in New York. So he guided me a little bit about where, where can they go, gas stations where they can get their, they can re, recharge and be okay. So it's not like you just throw them and leave them alone. They have to find the sources to, to, to be strong and persevere. Mm -hmm and don't, don't lose their faith. So um, we worked on that. We made sure that around the university there was gonna be that support that she needed. But she was strong, she went strong, but she, need, she, she knew the sources to maintain that strength. It was also very interesting because they, they didn't feel that easily. They were, they were convinced that following others is not the truth, it's not following the majority. That the truth is in itself. It's not in a person. It's in a person, Christ. But it is not in, in, the, in, the, in the crowds. Right. Most right. kids think that the crowds and the majority define what you think. Mm -hmm. I think my girls didn't think that way. And I don't think Anina felt that way. So let me just say a couple of things in regards to this matter here. So uh, most teenagers are insecure. You know, you're trying to deal with hormones, you know, guys get lengthy, you know, girls, you know, have body changes, boys, boys chains, you know, so you are trying to prepare for college and uh, you're trying to be yourself at the same time, be with your family. So this is where mutual respect comes into the equation. Mutual respect is a very important part of society that is often neglected. Uh, be much better reminding a little bit about self, uh, being selfish. So uh, what I wanted to emphasize here is that uh, if you live in a world where you that surround with a lot of insecure people, you become insecure yourself. These are around the people that are confident and with themselves. And I think this is one of the things that what we learned from homeschooling and the Kobe Academy is uh, confidence, proper formation, you educate and you prepare it. And I think Kobe does a better job than anyone else prepare a kid for college. And you have faith uh, because uh, eventually you have to face society. And I would say a lot of parents are terrified of, of sending their kids to uh, some of these bigger schools. They will be gobbled up. But uh, I think Kobe uh, was very instrumental in helping their kids to uh, be able to maintain their faith through different, you know, there's a lot of private or smaller Catholic schools, uh, liberal schools that uh, parents are more comfortable setting their kids. Uh, one of the schools we went to without mention name, uh, when we learned about uh, the colloquium, it reminded us a little bit about what our kids have spent four years in high school at Kobe. And I said, no, we don't need to have an extension of something we already done for four years. We want the next level. And eventually we are preparing our kids to enter society and uh, 
be uh, you know be their own and learn to survive uh, and uh, and i think between our values and uh, the concept of teaching of coping we feel very blessed that we have given our kids a great chance to to deal with these challenges they face of being in college and we know uh, a school like berkeley which we commence are known to be more liberal but actually a lot of very conservative element there that uh, took us by surprise and there's great catholic formation more than you would ex expect uh, then you have notre dame which uh, is a, known as a catholic school a lot of these are other uh, uh, catholic school but i think all schools are very liberal <laughs> maybe more than i want them to be so i don't want to you know stereotype against berkeley notre dame or some of the smaller school that one is better than the other you know there's all catholic element in these schools and if you are good at a, a smart student you know how to seek these things out and as i told my last uh, kid aviva when she went to notre dame aviva notre dame is a great institution and you can have a lot of fun and great insight, meet great people from six o'clock in the morning to 12 o'clock at night. Anything outside that from 12 o'clock at night to six o'clock in the morning, there's nothing good going to come out of that. If you want to spend time with that element, you know, you have got a very different experience than if you just focus on 75% of the time, that's all good. And also, but I think that is, every child is unique. So they have, they have to, you have to see what is for every child, what university will make them be do not lose their faith that they what every every child has different needs and we're blessed to have a lot of options in this country i think kathy is right know. parents know their kids better than anyone yeah. else they have and to see not be where swayed. they can be faithful you shouldn't be yeah. swayed by pressure from other parents or a society that you have to send your kids in a particular place i can only say uh, my wife come from a academic minded family and people that are looking for academia, which I think is an important uh, fundamental in society. You always say the better education you have, the better chance you have in life. Or opportunity, you know, it's not just by chance, it's about opportunity of doing something you really love doing. A lot of people make mistakes in life and they miss out on that great opportunity. And I think that uh, uh, the experience we've had with Kobe, and this is why we, you know, we did it, did it three times and we have had no regrets. And this is why we're willing to participate in a program like this to give back, to give, inspire other parents to overcome their fears and uh, give their ch kids the best possible chance to uh, be, the, be a better version of themselves. Tying in for our family too there, it's, it's um, I remember having a conversation with one of my children as they're getting into the approaching teenage years and just telling them, look, the years of the dangers out here, you know, we're trying to be virtuous, but I can't, I can't prevent you from, from these things. It's up to you to be active to you. You need to want this for yourself because no matter what I do, I can't prevent you from choosing this bad thing. You can do it. it I, I can't watch you 24 hours a day. So it's up to you. And, you know, th those were just good conversations to have where it's, it's like, I think then when you get off into a college or whatever, I think that that lasts because you don't sit, think, oh, now I'm suddenly free from from being watched all the time. It's like, no, I've chosen exactly. this. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, this is Steve, this is exactly the, the beautiful thing they have. We have to build a conscious and they have to own their faith. Mm -hmm. They have to. They, they, and that is the, through the homeschooling time is building, building the conscious. So when they go out, they know it's between them and God, and, it's, and they mm -hmm. want to be good. They want to... By the way, one of the things, uh, we still have a long way to go with the kids and with ourselves, but our main idea, we were, the main, the main, the main interest we have with our kids is for them to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> right. And I'm not saying that like, honestly, that's all what matters. I, I, mm -hmm. It's true that I love the academia, but the academia is for them to give back. We need more people saying, screaming that, human beings are good and they're wonderful and we're capable of doing great things we can go really far with goodness and and with god in our lives it is a great life on earth and in eternity so it's just the tools to my, i want my kids to find the tools how to serve god and do the best they can make it 
And as I said, be happy here and on earth and in eternity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the main goal. So whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. If they have to, if one of them decide to go away and and live a life of contemplation, and that's the way God wants it, I prepare you for that. That's where we're going. Mm -hmm. So it's it's nothing special. It's just getting in to see what God wants from each one of the kids. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it. Parenthood is so exciting. It's a very, you, you, you're so inspired all the time. You're so, it's an art. It's, mm -hmm. it's fun. Sometimes it's scary, but it, it's just, we're going to go through this. We're going to, it's great. It's so inspiring. That, and you're so right about the bottom line, the main goal, heaven is what we're, this, that's what this is all about. Keeping that front and center is so important and what a beautiful reminder. And it's a happy reminder. Yes. <laughs> it's yes. a great I reminder. It. I love it. It makes every every suffering, every goal. I mean, it's also very inspiring when all with these families, you, we're not alone. I'm constantly, I don't know if you guys experience that, but when you're close to all these families, there are different worlds. So they inspire you. You're not, a, you're not in a bubble. I, I am not in a bubble. Mm -hmm. I'm exposed to amazing people. So when, when I don't know how to deal in any situation, there's some amazing woman who says something and I'm, you know, and these all get together with the kids and with the parents and it's like, whoa, I learned something and I go home and we learn from each other constantly. And Nikolai learns, he said, I have the coolest friends. They are inspiring me to be a better husband and a better father. And I, I we all are growing in an amazing way because we're surrounded with a huge world good world it's a great world and in that process i have found that it's a it's it's it, it makes our life with many dimensions it's a great it's a great life contrary to what people think the world is bigger in a family life and in this experience we have uh, my husband and i have been uh, been blessed with richness well, we sure appreciate all that you have given us today in this conversation and all you contribute to the Colby community in, in so many ways. Thank you so much for visiting with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank oh, you, Bonnie. Thank you, Stephen. It was fantastic to meet you. Likewise. It was wonderful to meet you. Indeed. <laughs> Thank you. Subscribe to the Colby Cast on your favorite podcast app so that you don't miss an episode. And let us know how we're doing by leaving a rating or a review. And as always, feel free to email us at podcast at colby.org. Mary, our mother, pray for us. St. Maximilian Colby, pray for us. Ad maiorem dei gloriam.